Hello, and welcome to the PFFUI podcast. On this month's episode, President Tony Murray is joined by Indianapolis Fire Chief Ernest Malone and Vice President Hank Harris to discuss the labor management relationship, the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association, and the impact of the PFFUI in the fire service. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to the PFFUI podcast. My name is Eric Shoeb, and I'm joined today by Tony Murray. Hey, Tony, how are things going today? Good, Eric. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good to see you again. Yeah, it is very nice to see you as well. Yeah. So we are joined here today by Vice President Hank Harris and a special guest. So, Tony, I will let you introduce our guest today. All right. Well, uh, before I do that, uh, Hank Harris, this is his second podcast appearance. So, uh, hello, Hank. Hello, Tony. Number two. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, we've had a variety of guests over the time we've been doing the podcast and uh, the the very famous PFFUI fi- podcast. And uh, I, I'm really happy to welcome our guest today. Uh, we've He's going to be the first because we've never had a fire chief on the show. Uh, so now that I've, um, you know, properly prepped this, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Fire Chief Ernest Malone from the Indianapolis Fire Department. Uh, the state's largest fire department and a really good friend uh, to the PFFUI and, and certainly to Local 416. Uh, welcome in today, Chief. Uh, good morning. Thank you uh, so much for the invitation. It's very much appreciate, uh, appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We, we appreciate you taking time uh, out of your schedule to be here today. And, uh, you know, you have um, interacted with uh, this union for a really, um, through the course of your tenure as chief, and I believe it's been 10 years that you've been the fire chief. Is that right? It was uh, 10 years, August 11th. Yeah. All right. Time flies. It was just like yesterday, right? I imagine. But uh, you have been, uh, you have graced us with uh, um, your um, your your talents and, and your presence and your knowledge and advice, um, talking to a number of our members uh, through panels and even earlier this year, uh, in the spring, you were here uh, to, you and Hank uh, actually held a um, a workshop on labor management for our uh, new officers conference. So, you know, we we really appreciate this time to sort of have this opportunity on a, on a one-on-one scale with you. So if you wouldn't mind, um, you know, maybe getting to know you and introducing, uh, you know, how you uh, came to the, to be the Indianapolis fire chief, but if you can take us back a little bit, you know, what what um, what caused you to get involved in the fire service and, and what was your path, you know, to this position? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you again. Um, didn't know much about the fire service at all. Um, in uh, 1985, I was a, a young man trying to find my way in this world. Um, knew I wanted something. I liked the structure of the, the military or the police department or fire department. Um, so in early uh, 1985, I was actually uh, recruited by both what was then IPD, uh, the police department here in Indianapolis, and IFD. Um, and I still like to say, you know, 38 and a half years later, IFD moves faster. Um, I was actually still in the police department process when IFD uh, made an offer. And uh, so I say I almost got in the wrong line, but I was able to pivot and uh, and land successfully with uh, IFD in uh, February of uh, '86. So uh, my only involvement with the fire department was uh, as a kid. My um, friends we used to ride our bikes on the east side of town near Station 24, there at 38th and uh, uh, Audubon IFD station, uh, and we used to ride our bikes to the back of the station and get a, a soft drink out of a old-fashioned uh, pop machine. And firefighters would come out and talk to us. And uh, But other than that, I didn't have any friends or family or, or know much about it until I was actually uh, hired by IFD. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's great. But, and you are, um, you're, you're born and raised Nap, right? That's, Absolutely. Yeah, that's home. Yeah, yeah, that's home. Very good. Well, and you know what those firefighters were doing. You know, taking those coins out of the, <laughs> out of that machine. Yeah. You know, I probably don't want to know what you. <laughs> but, 
you know, they were probably paying for meals and yeah, absolutely <laughs> all all productive things. Yeah. I'm sure. So, uh, well, certainly, I think you made the right choice, um, and uh, I think Indianapolis and in, in, uh, our state is better for it. Um, and we're just glad that you, you you stayed on the on the fire side for sure. Uh, so, uh, what what was the path to to uh, throughout your career? So, you know, you and you've had a since 1986. You know, what, yeah. What were those years like? This certainly wasn't it, uh, and people seem surprised when I tell them that. But I uh, had no desire to um, be the fire chief. Wanted to make uh, the rank of captain and be a house captain and have the busiest uh, apparatus and the cleanest station and the best crew. And uh, that truly was uh, the goal. But, you know, life and your career uh, opens doors and exposes you to things. And uh, I think you have to be ready to walk through that and and say, well, why not me? Can I help? Can I make this better for the men and women of this department and certainly the folks that make up our our community here? So uh, just kind of took that walk and uh, but it was never my intention to be the fire chief in Indianapolis not at all it's an interesting uh, observation that a uh, reading about you um, that you actually have um, uh, been promoted to every promotable rank within the structure of the IFD uh, so you you went beyond captain you made it to the goal yeah and then you kept going yeah, I think that's important. Uh, just one of my tenements is I, I believe it's hard to supervise a skill that you don't understand and that you're not capable of doing. So try to uh, learn everything I can and get involved in all the opportunities that the not only Indianapolis but the fire service as a whole offers us um, as firefighters uh, and just position yourself that uh, if there's something you choose to do that you think can help, you have the, the KSAs, the knowledge, skills, and abilities to do that. Um, I think that's great. And, and um, uh, you, you've had a great career and 10, 10 years as fire chief and since 1986 on the department. Um, you have had the, um, I guess, the, well, one could look at it as the fortune or the misfortune to actually work with this guy seated next to you uh, <laughs> during, <laughs> during, your, during your being chief. But, uh, 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 Hank Harris is the the, the president of uh, Local 416 and has been for a number of years. How many years now, Hank? Uh, eight. Eight years. Okay, eight years. Eight years. Uh, so you, you got a two-year. <laughs> I was the district sure. president for those two oh, years. Oh, okay. So you no, really it's get, been 10 years. <laughs> you did get a break at time. <laughs> no break. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, but one of the, the great tenements, and I think that's something that, um, you know, for a number of years, the Indianapolis Fire Department and Local 416 have been known and, and in many respects have been the example of is this great labor management philosophy, but also applied practice of sure. philosophy. Um, you know, and that takes it, it, that takes a commitment um, from both sides, as we know, both from the, the fire chiefs, uh, the fire chief and him, him or herself. But uh, that total administration buy-in to that concept, but it also is a buy-in from uh, the local leadership, and and it truly is a philosophy. But if applied right, I think it works. Can we talk a little bit about um, the labor management experience through the years um, from your perspective, uh, Chief, and and then uh, maybe talk about these last eight years? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, well, Indianapolis has a, a long-standing uh, positive labor management uh, relationship uh, that I've seen, um, you know, from afar and obviously over the last 10 years uh, more um, up close. Um, but Hank and I agree we can we can do more together than we can fighting each other. As I travel the country and, and do some of the other things that I'm involved in, I, I carry that message. It's not a policy or a procedure for us. Uh, uh, it hasn't been in Indianapolis, but it, I don't want to speak for Hank, but I think I can on this point that we we believe in it. We we live it. Um, when I was appointed chief, uh, Hank will probably remember this, I we talked and said, first of all, we don't want to mess this up. We've been doing this for a lot of years, having positive labor management relations. And um, I promised him that every decision I make you can prom you can believe that it's what I honestly believe is best for the members of our organization in this um, community. Um, 
it won't be about Ernest Malone, and I would challenge anybody to say that the last 10 years have been about me. We try to keep as low a profile as possible. Uh, but I believe that. I made that promise to him, uh, and he promised the same, that, that we're going to work together. Now, we don't always agree. I don't want people to think that means that it's always warm and fuzzy every day, uh, but there's a mutual respect, and sometimes we take a time out and a pause, and if we're not moving the needle, and then we'll regroup and, and get business done. So I, I absolutely am very fortunate uh, to have him as a partner uh, in what we're trying to do here in this city. And it seems to be a model that uh, works. Uh, Hank, you know, how, how you know, the chief mentioned that that was a commitment made, uh, and it was a commitment to a partnership as I sort of see it. How, how's that work for you? Because every day, I mean, both of these jobs are very challenging, whether you're the, the fire chief of, of, of any department uh, or you're the union president for any local union, no matter how large or small, there are challenges. Hank, how's, how's this experience been? Yeah, so like the chief said, we made that commitment together, and whether we, like you said, we may not always agree, but we agree on what the intention is of our actions. Like So like the chief said, I know while I may not agree with something he does, I know the intent is there to take care of our members. He may not agree with some of the actions that we have to take, but he knows the intent's there to take care of our members in the community. So it's more of what is the intention of our purpose, like what is our purpose, how we do it, and our strategy or actions may differ. We may not agree on all that, but the end goal and the intention is the same on both sides. At the end of the day, the fire chief should want what's best for his members in the community, make sure they all go home safe, can provide for their family. Likewise, as the local president, my intention is to make sure our members are taken care of. We can provide a good service to the community and they can go and take care of their families in retirement or beyond. So at the end of the day, we should have both the same intention. How we get there, strategy-wise, may differ a little bit, and we may hit some bumps in the road as that goes on, but at the end of the day, the intent is the same. Well, let's talk about that for a second, if we could. Um, so when you when you find yourself in those positions, and, and, and Hank, how does that, what's an example of how you get past it? The chief mentioned that you pause, and, and that's essential, right? So pause. Hit pause, and, and then what happens if you have to, you know, maybe you're thinking it, you don't need to say it, but maybe you're thinking about a particular issue um, that you've had a challenge with. H how do you, what are the steps to take? Because we could, we have maybe some members listening. Uh, we could have some local leaders listening. Well, heck, we could have some chiefs listening, too. So, <laughs> so, so what do you do? Uh, I think the first thing is pause and take the emotion out of it. When, when, you're, when you're in a discussion and you're going back and forth in a, we do labor management at the private closed door meeting between our leadership and chief's leadership. And we always say that meeting, we can say what we want in those meetings. When you get to that point, take a pause and take the emotion out of it and remember what we're both there for. How we get to where we're going may be different. But if you make decisions based on emotion and the heat of the moment at the time, and sometimes you just get wound up in a fight, it, that doesn't do, that's not productive because you're just going to keep spinning your wheels and keep going around the circle. So take a pause, take the emotion out of it, and get back down to what are we trying to solve? What's our mission? What are we trying to get to? And then as a local, ultimately, the chief does have the authority to do certain things that while we may not agree, it is his authority. Um, but again, look at the bigger picture. What's the long-term goal and how do we move that? We always say in th those closed doors, we can disagree, hash it out, fight it out, but when we leave that, we may agree to disagree, but we're going to agree on what the message is. Doesn't mean we agree with it, but we're agreeing that's what that message is, and that's what we have. Yeah, I think that's super important. Uh, Hank has said it a couple different ways, but the way I characterize it is we see the same finish line, just the route there may be a little different. So let's respect it as that. It's not personal. We just have a lift, little different view because we've agreed already that we want what's best for our members. So we see the same finish line. We just have a different um, a route. And uh, we do need to have that open conversation. We have scheduled labor management meetings, but Hank knows he can walk in my door anytime he wants and I'm going to stop what I'm doing and we're going to talk about what needs uh, to be talked about. I think an important piece that it may come up later is you can't just wait until you have an issue to start trying to communicate with each other. 
Um, Hank knows our plans. The union's a part of our plans. Uh, we always have to caution people. I don't run Local 416, and they don't run the Indianapolis Fire Department, but we work together to do what's best for our, our members. But if you educate each other on this is why I want to do this, this is the plan we have for this, and this is how we think we make things better, if everybody understands that, you can you can truly eliminate, in my opinion, the vast majority of misconceptions about why we're doing something we're doing. And I think you got to understand and respect each side and who we answer to. Mm-hmm. I know the chief has to answer to political figures, the mayor, his own staff, um, city leadership. I have to answer to our membership, um, which are the uh, tell me what they honestly think. I don't know if the it's a little different than dealing with the mayor and the city county councilors. They have no problem calling me and tell me what they honestly believe and think. Um, but I think the the members are very good at making their message yeah. clear. They're, yeah. They don't, they're yeah. not, they're so, not you see. Yeah. So I have to respect that the chief is answering to certain people and he has certain things that he has to do. And the position he's in is different than the position I'm in. And likewise, I think he understands and respects the position I'm in. And the the members are the people that I answer to. So I think knowing who we answer to is also kind of a helps kind of temper it or kind of understand where each one of us are coming from and why we may want to, why we see things differently. So if I had to summarize how my observation of how this labor management philosophy works and is applied. My observation would be this. One, it's centered around respect, uh, respect for each other, respect for the the positions, and respect for the group of people that ultimately both the fire department and the local serves. So I think that that's great. I think I see by observation that it's about the issues, not about personal things. Make it about the issues. Attack the issues. Don't attack the person. And then finally, I, I think that I observe is that whatever the challenge is, you enter that challenge with understanding that there will be a solution at the end of it. Sure. That, that's what we're charged with. You know, um, I tell people all the time, it may not be easy, but we're the right group to solve this problem. There's no political motivation or monetary motivation. It's how do we do the right thing for our members? So let's Let's work the problem. I'll call Hank and ask him, what do you think about this? doesn't have to be a labor issue. What do you think about this as a firefighter, um, as as the union president? And I think he'll do the same. Hey, I'm thinking about writing this or thinking about doing this. And he's going to honestly tell me what he thinks, and that's what I'm looking for. And I, I think he knows that I'm going to do likewise and, and tell him, and uh, it, it works for us. One thing I'll say, you mentioned the uh, sessions we did earlier, Tony. I think it's key, and and Hank and I both relayed this uh, to the folks in the room that day, to to educate yourself. How is the city funded? How is the department funded? Local 416 does a tremendous job of knowing um, revenue and expenses and how taxes are. And if you understand that process, you're not... Um, disillusioned because you think there's a pot of money somewhere that there's really not. So take the time to educate yourself on the issues, and then you can speak intelligently to your fire chief, to your city manager, to your mayor, whoever, uh, about what you're trying to accomplish. I think the days of pounding your fist and saying, give it to us because we're the union, doesn't work well. (laughs) How's that going, Hank? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I'm still pounding. <laughs> yeah, we, we, your head against a wall, so nobody can see. Um, but uh, so I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna ask you questions, Chief. Um, sure. Uh, are you still a member of the local? Absolutely, have been for 38 and a half years. So as a fire chief, I mean, you you really you 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 don't have to be. There's not you know there's no requirement, of course, uh, to be in, in the bylaws and all. Why why do you feel that that's important? It's just part of my fabric. I I believe in it. Um, been a proud union member. I support labor locally and internationally. Again, I just think we can do more together. Uh, labor's there to advocate for their members and and hold administrations uh, accountable. 
uh, in a positive and productive way. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a proud labor me- uh, member and I rarely give a speech or, or a talk that I don't talk about the labor management relationship that I'm privileged to enjoy here. Uh, and again, how we can get more done together. Just don't make it personal. And sometimes it can feel personal. And maybe that's the time to take that pause we talked about and get back on the issue and then keep your promise to each other. That let's work together to make things better for our people because at the end of the day, it's not about me and it's not about Hank. It's about our members. And I believe that uh, just it's just part of who we are. Well, I certainly appreciate that perspective. And, and by, again, another observation, I think that uh, you are uh, both meeting the challenges um, that you're presented with in, in these positions. And, and you know, the, the elected officers of Local 416, its members, and, and the people that engage, um, and your staff, uh, chief, and, you know, even into the decision makers, um, really do a part to, to, to deliver the best product. Uh, for the citizens, um, and to do it in a way where the members feel supported. Uh, we can talk about a bunch of advancements that, that I know that in your 10 years as, as fire chief have been priority to you. Um, we don't have time to do that, but I will mention that, um, again, another observation, and I think that the total buy-in from the, the, from the local has been the apparatus replacement. You've replaced the entire fleet uh, and turned it over, um, you know, maintenance of equipment, uh, and just talking about one of the the, the, the mo- most important things is um, health and wellness of the members sure. because if, if – and I know that you've invested in that and that's been a great priority among other things that sure. you've done. Yeah, just critically important. I mean, we hear people talk about our people are the most important thing. Well, you know, I'm, I'm privileged to, to work and be in an organization with some of the best people um, I've ever met. And, and I'm honored to be their chief, but uh, we want to back up what we say with our continual investment in our health and wellness uh, programs to to do just that. And that's that's our overall wellness, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. We want to make um, our member whole in in every way. We're we're asked to do a very dangerous thing, and I often comment that we see things and experience things that. Are, even after this many years, I don't believe a human being is supposed to see and experience. And, and there's going to be a reaction to that, and we all manage it in our own personal way. But there will be a reaction to the things we see and we're exposed. And our folks will take care of business and we'll make things better. But uh, I care about the, the whole firefighter because uh, they can't do their best for this community if we don't do our best for them. All right, so Indianapolis has been um, very welcoming uh, on a national stage because uh, for many, many years, Indianapolis uh, and, and your department in the city have rolled out the red carpets for FDIC, a big event that takes place here in, in April. Um, so IFD is not unfamiliar to being on the national stage, but Recently, you were elected president of the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs, otherwise known as Metro Chiefs. Congratulations on that election, thank you, Mr. President, and it, which even broadens IFD's uh, spotlight from the, the national stage perspective. Uh, tell us about about your role there and maybe some of your goals in your presidency. Yeah, you know, the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association is a is a section. Uh, Within the International Association of Fire Chiefs, IAFC, there's 18 divisions and sections within that. Um, we're, we proudly serve and embrace the opportunity to try to get some things done as, um, as president. You know, I want to make sure we understand that uh, we're not just a profession because we say we're a profession. We need to continue to have the attributes and our behaviors and the skills that make folks recognize us as a per, as a perfect as a profession. Um, so the metro the metro association is the two hundred largest um, fire departments in the world. Their chiefs uh, we are international association. Uh, those uh, chiefs of those of those departments make up the metro chiefs. Um, some of the things that, that we wanted uh, to accomplish, I, I kind of summed it up uh, under three categories, and that was resiliency, 
uh, member development and alignment and collaboration. Uh, broad categories, but when I talk about resiliency, we talked about it a little bit here, our firefighter health and wellness. Uh, we continue to battle cancer. We've got, I was just in Boston last week uh, with the Urban Fire Forum. We had the uh, 10 largest cities in America there, and I was there as a Metro president to, to talk about uh, these issues. Um, we're passionate about women's health issues, and over the past few years, we've had more of our members take their own life than die in the line of duty. That That's a problem for us that we want to address. Uh, recruitment and retention is a problem uh, in both our career and even to a, a larger level in our volunteer uh, services. Our member development, we want to continue to uh, offer leadership training. Uh, we have to get better. Uh, technology changes. Another thing I think is important for people to know is we want to embrace technology as a fire service. Uh, everyone says we're data-driven, uh, but I always add we're data-driven. we got a lot of plans. We look at a lot of numbers. We're data-driven, but we're people-focused. Every one of those data points will have an effect on one of our firefighters, a member of our family, or someone in our community. So while we're looking at all these numbers and this data, I think it's important to pause and say, what story did it just tell us, and how do we apply it to our membership? Not just look at numbers for the sake of numbers and regurgitate facts. How are you going to use that to make things, again, uh, better for people? Uh, alignment and collaboration, just briefly. Uh, I think we have a lot of good people and associations, uh, both labor and management, uh, working on important issues. But during my term as president, I want to try to bring that in. Um, Dep um, U.S. Fire Administrator Lori Moore Merrill has a program. Good one friend of us, right? Good, good friend. friend. Good friend. Yeah. Um, well, she was in Boston with us last week. But we need to coalesce and combine those efforts. Uh, we we got it's kind of fragmented, in my opinion. That a lot of people again doing good things, working on important issues, but uh, we're not talking to each other. And, and I think we can really move the needle if we can bring some of those conversations together. I, you know, I think that uh, Hank would, would agree that I don't see any of those topics that you just brought that, that how those are any different than those are similar in shared interests and objectives. Sure. Um, I, I see that there's opportunity for collaboration and, and I know that they're uh, at one time. Um, and I think that this is coming, uh, re being more revitalized, I think, but a collaboration in labor management alliance, it, it started out as labor management initiative many, many years ago between the international, uh, fire chiefs and the IFS. And I know that we've had, you know, Tom Hanafy has been a part of that to, and, and other chiefs, um, to deliver some technical services around to locals and administrations around the country. Um, that was a was a, a very um, uh, uh, strategic collaboration, I think, both with you know the Chiefs Association and the Firefighters Association. Um, is there anything in the works uh, right now for that? Yeah, we've collaborated on several things. Uh, we've signed joint that we, being the Metro and the uh, IAFF, um, on uh, PFAS and fire gear. We're looking at apparatus. Um, initiatives. Um, uh, we're looking at uh, the new accreditation process for SIPSI is open for uh, comments, and uh, we produced a joint letter on how to bring labor management and make it a part of the accreditation process. That's how important we think it is. If we, if we say international accreditation is a mark of a really successful organization, I don't think that happens very easily without labor management. Uh, and if we want to spur these positive concepts, uh, we're trying to make it a part of the um, accreditation process, a more robust portion of the accreditation process. Yeah, and, and I'm familiar with that letter. Our, our secretary treasurer, J.C. Mitchell, is actually um, uh, somebody that sits on that board uh, for the accreditation board along with some other colleagues through the IFF and then shared that. Uh, component with us that that's something that uh, is being analyzed and looked at and and um, uh, talked about in terms of of um, accreditation going forward. Yeah, we have shared interests. We're going to continue to work on Capitol Hill. We got extensions on 
on safer and AFG this year, but those things will go away if if we don't uh, keep uh, keep at it. So we'll we'll make several trips to Capitol Hill and and lobby our congressional representatives. Um, we want to do big things, but we're also looking at things like how can we get apparatus turnaround time quicker? That affects our communities. Everybody's experiencing the uh, with the supply chain issues. We think we have some ideas on how to improve that. It can be difficult to get an ambulance in America's fire service. We're going to work with some of those vendors to see if we can prioritize public safety uh, in making those vehicles available. Not asking you to give it to us for free. Sure. But can we have the first 20,000 presented to public safety for purchase so uh, we can serve the people who buy your vehicles on your car lots, you know? So that's the way we're going to kind of frame it. So some some 30,000 foot level issues, but the everyday issues that fire chiefs and communities and firefighters are experiencing, uh, we're going to make those priorities too during during our time here. It sounds like that uh, you have a uh, an ambitious agenda, but a, a, an agenda that really does matter in terms of making the fire service uh, better. Uh, you know, one of the things in shifting into sort of more uh, Hoosier-oriented, uh, Hank Harris, as our vice president, is going to be a fixture in the hallways of, of that state capitol uh, when the session returns back in January, or at this coming January. And and you mentioned, you know, our efforts, and I, I, I think whether it be fire chief or firefighters, you know, we are on Capitol Hill. We are in our state capitals. We are talking to our um, legislators, decision makers about how their laws and policy affect the fire service. So going into this next session, um, you know, I, I know that uh, you have um, you have provided testimony on uh, certain issues uh, in the past in the Indiana legislature. Um in general assembly, but uh, w- can you give us a perspective on, from your view, Chief, the the impact of the PFFUI and the fire service uh, for Indiana? Oh, I just um, not because I'm sitting here. I just have tremendous respect for for you uh, and as the the association as a whole. Um, uh, you listeners can know that these folks are advocates every single day. Uh, for the needs of uh, Indiana's firefighters, uh, and I respect that. And the times I've been asked to partner on a, an agenda item, uh, I wholeheartedly uh, I hope you feel that I supported it and was uh, uh, whatever it is and, and responsive uh, to it. But it, it just goes back to kind of where we started, that I just have a, a fundamental belief in in labor, and certainly in a labor management alliance or relationship, because again, it just confuses me where people fight. And, and Hank and I talked about this in the session, in the joint session we did. We just said, how's that working for you? How, what, did, what did you accomplish over the last year for your members? Because remember, that's why you're the fire chief and that, that's why you're the union president, is to make things better for those people. Can we agree on that? And were you successful in that while you're um, not working through your differences on behalf of those folks? And, and we just wanted to put them in that moment. And, and it, it's really true that we I don't know that we can accomplish if we work on it together. Uh, Hank has stood with me. I've had a lot of plans over the last 10 years. He's taken heat. Um, we closed fire stations and built new ones as, as part of a 20-year station replacement plan. But he saw the long-term benefit in it um, and stood next to me as we announced those very difficult things. We wouldn't do anything that would cost a firefighter a job, but he or uh, him or her, he or she may get a new locker, you know, but uh, if it makes it better long-term for the department, those are the things that we're tasked with doing. Well, I, I can say that uh, you um, have been a great um a great ally, I think, when it comes to fire service issues and supporting the fire service and EMS, um, and uh, and and everything that it takes to to uh, do this work out uh, and deliver for the citizens. And and I really look forward to um, working with you in 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 uh, you know your role beyond you know the the uh, borders of of Indianapolis and Indiana. I, I think that it's great. And and one of the things we and Hank and I talk about. Uh, you know, um, 
we should label it, you know, we bring in the experts uh, for bill testimony sometimes. And you really have, you bring a, a very unique perspective. You bring the facts and you deliver it in a way um, that people can understand uh, very technical information and and, there, and, and do it um, efficiently. Because as you know, <laughs> you know, whether you're talking to the city county council or the general assembly, uh, you know, or, you know, you may think about yourself that, you know, you're, you want the facts and only the facts and then move on to the next thing. So I, I think that you've done, you, you have been very successful in communicating the message and carrying the message for sure. Thank you. All right. Do, Chief, do you have any closing parting thoughts that? No, just, I, I truly want to thank you again for uh, the opportunity. I would love to come back and, uh, if invited and we can, we can do this again. And, uh, talk about important issues for our, our, our fire service. So uh, thank you again. I appreciate it. We appreciate you taking time, Chief. It's been great. We appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for listening to the PFFUI podcast. Follow us on social media by searching the Professional Firefighters Union of Indiana. For more information about news and upcoming events, visit www.pffui.com. Until next time, this is PFFUI Communications Director Eric Shoeb. Stay safe.